financing options for beginning farmers, Unit 11. <clears throat> We've talked a lot about planning during this unit and budgeting and looking at your options as far as crops and um, your operation and what your interests are and who your market's going to be. And But we have to spend some time on finance, and I just will have a disclaimer at this point, I guess, that um, I'm not a big fan of borrowing lots of money. I am a believer in Dave Ramsey, the radio personality that talks about being debt-free. And so finance is one of those things that have to happen. And uh, my, my belief is if you're interested in being a farmer, there's no way uh, to finance a corn and soybean operation in the way that you can finance a small operation. And so as part of your homework in this in this unit, you looked at the four business resources and then you kind of evaluated how much of each of those you have. And by doing those evaluations can kind of help you determine where you're going to need more uh, finance and capital to keep your operation going. And so from the land perspective, probably the easiest of the four resources to achieve, in my opinion, is the land. You can find small plots of land that traditional corn and soybean farmers aren't really interested in, in using. And even in, the, even in the city, I was in downtown Chicago uh, recently, and, and two girls were farming on a half an acre a half an acre city lot that no that nobody was using and they were uh, successful farmers in downtown Chicago. Uh, renting or leasing also provides you with a less of a capital obligation but what I would encourage you if you're going to go that route is to try to get a long-term a long-term lease. So that allows you to do some soil improvements and you maybe find somebody that's willing to do a contract where you can buy it directly from the owner which gives you the opportunity to lower the interest rates and, and determine the terms that work best for both you and the landowner. The labor. You know, how much time do you have to work on the farm? Uh, we're doing a one acre uh, farm on campus and we probably have, we're probably working two, myself and my uh, apprentice are each working about 30 hours a week on one acre. So how much time do you have? When is it available? If you're a teacher, that gives you some a lot of freedom in the summer. Uh, family members are always an option, but make sure they are in agreement with that. And um, can you find a partner? Uh, if you have somebody to work with and to help, and I think a partner is a great opportunity, allows you a chance to get away from the farm every once in a while, and that's kind of the role that my apprentice is serving this year. And then capital, what is capital? Well, capital, we tend to think of capital as money, but can also be the tools and equipment that are necessary to, to run your business. If you have a, a pop-up shelter that you already have available, then that would require less capital to get set up in the farmer's market. So your tools, your pickup, Tillers are items that require capital but may be available. And we talked about the CSA concept. The advantage to that is it allows you to get some capital up front. And then management. I think the two sides of management in this, up, in this program is grow, being able to grow the product and being able to market the product. So two very important and I don't know which one is most important. Uh, I think they're both very important and they're both the big key of management. And if you don't have the knowledge where there's options out there and, and we have also explored those during this class. And so you did your you did a personal assessment, you've looked at your business resources and you've determined uh, that you need to raise capital. So what are your options? for securing that money. 
and we're going to talk about uh, each of these as we as we continue along today so the bank loan um, that's pretty straightforward uh, you're going to need some forms and here's a list of forms that you're going to have to have available the bank wants to see your business plan and they want to see your net worth they want to know what your ability is to repay because they are loaning you the money and the only way they make money is if you repay with interest and they want to make sure that you are a good investment I have included some sources of um, capital as far as beginning farmer loans that's becoming a an important part of the farm bill and, and there's opportunity there for young farmers to secure some capital at pretty low interest loans at this point one that's kind of appealing to me is the the crowdfunding um, the website I look at the most is called kickstarter.com and that's where you get people to invest in your business in exchange for services or t-shirts or in our case fruit and vegetables so I encourage you to take a look at Kickstarter and then the CSA we've talked about that already but the customers you line up your customers ahead of time and then they provide uh, you with the startup money that you're going to need to buy seeds and fertilizer and this stuff at the beginning and they're going to assume some of the risk if things are going good their baskets going to be really full if we have a drought and or an insect or a pest problem then their crops going to suffer as well so it's kind of a risk management and you can raise capital early so some potential business partners um, landowners that are willing to allow you to use their land possibly some chefs at a restaurant who wants to secure good uh, healthy produce to serve in their restaurant may be willing to get on board the crowdfunding and um, somebody that wants to work on the farm to trade to trade for fruit and vegetables I think is another great opportunity for some partnership and then the contract loan is an agreement uh, contracts agreement between two parties you're going to agree to work with the landowner and you work out the terms and it's very flexible and if you don't pay the landowner gets the land back and uh, but most of the time I would guess the contract loan is is fulfilled and so very flexible you set the terms up between the two parties leasing or renting can reduce your upfront cost but to really improve the soil it's going to take uh, several years and so you're working on that the whole time and and the trouble with the lease is you have no security on how long you're going to get to farm that land and renting as far as capital things one thing that I talk about a lot when I'm doing a workshop uh, we had we got one acre plowed for hundred and forty dollars and at that point that was a better deal than than trying to secure sources to buy the equipment to do it ourselves so pretty um, cheap opportunity to get some of the major tillage done and with renting instead of leasing um, you typically can have a long-term lease where renting is typically year by year so what's the advantages to a small farm well the low initial investment um, five to ten thousand is a lot of uh, startup capital that's going to allow you to uh, have a really good start at a small business uh, the renting and leasing of the small plots of land lowers your commitment and your overall investment most of the equipment's going to hold their value fairly well I really think the utility tractor especially um, holds its value and if in three or four years it's not working out you have the opportunity to sell your equipment and uh, easy and easy to enter the market there's lots of opportunity for you and if you're you can be a price maker instead of a price taker <laughs>